Serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors SNRIs, are a class of antidepressant drugs that treat major depressive disorder MDD, and can also treat anxiety disorders, obsessive compulsive disorder OCD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder ADHD, chronic neuropathic pain, fibromyalgia syndrome FMS, and menopausal symptoms. SNRIs are monoamine reuptake inhibitors, specifically, they inhibit the reuptake of serotonin and norepinephrine. These neurotransmitters play an important role in mood. SNRIs can be contrasted with the more widely used selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors SSRIs, which act upon serotonin only. The human serotonin transporter CERT, and norepinephrine transporter NET, are membrane transport proteins that are responsible for the reuptake of serotonin and norepinephrine. Dual inhibition of serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake can offer advantages over other antidepressant drugs by treating a wider range of symptoms SNRIs, along with selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors SSRIs, and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors NRIs, are second-generation antidepressants. Over the past two decades, second-generation antidepressants have gradually replaced first-generation antidepressants, such as tricyclic antidepressants TCAs, and monoamine oxidase inhibitors MAOIs, as the drugs of choice for the treatment of MDD due to their improved tolerability and safety profile. A closely related type of drug is a serotonin norepinephrine releasing agent SNRA, for instance the withdrawn appetite suppressant fenfluramine fentermine, fen -fen. SNRAs primarily induce the release rather than inhibit the reuptake of serotonin and norepinephrine. Types Atomoxidine A norepinephrine-predominant SNRI used in the treatment of ADHD and, off-label, major depression. Was approved by FDA in 2002. Originally considered to be a selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, but research subsequently revealed that it significantly inhibits the reuptake of serotonin at clinical dosages as well. Desvenlafaxine The active metabolite of venlafaxine. It is believed to work in a similar manner, though some evidence suggests lower response rates compared to venlafaxine and duloxetine. It was introduced by Wyeth in May 2008 and was then the third approved SNRI. Duloxetine has been approved for the treatment of depression and neuropathic pain in August 2004. Duloxetine is contraindicated in patients with heavy alcohol use or chronic liver disease, as duloxetine can increase the levels of certain liver enzymes that can lead to acute hepatitis or other diseases in certain at-risk patients. Currently, the risk of liver damage appears to be only for patients already at risk, unlike the antidepressant nifazidone, which, though rare, can spontaneously cause liver failure in healthy patients. Duloxetine is also approved for major depressive disorder, MDD, generalized anxiety disorder, GAD, diabetic neuropathy, chronic musculoskeletal pain, including chronic osteoarthritis pain and chronic low back pain. Levomilnasoprine the levorotating isomer of milnasopran. Under development for the treatment of depression in the United States and Canada, it was approved by the FDA for treatment of MDD in July 2013. Milnasopran Shown to be significantly effective in the treatment of depression and fibromyalgia. The Food and Drug Administration FDA, approved milnasopran for treatment of fibromyalgia in the United States of America in January 2009, however it is currently not approved for depression in that country. Milnasopran has been commercially available in Europe and Asia for several years. It was first introduced in France in 1996. Subutramine, an SNRI, which, instead of being developed for the treatment of depression, was widely marketed as an appetite suppressant for weight loss purposes. Subutramine was the first drug for the treatment of obesity to be approved in 30 years. It has been associated with increased cardiovascular events and strokes and has been withdrawn from the market in several countries and regions including the United States in 2010. Tramadol, a dual-weak opioid and SNRI. It was approved by the FDA in 1995, though it has been marketed in Germany since 1977. The drug is used to treat acute and chronic pain. It has shown effectiveness in the treatment of fibromyalgia, though it is not specifically approved for this purpose. The drug is also under investigation as an antidepressant and for the treatment of neuropathic pain. 
It is related in chemical structure to venlafaxine. Venlafaxine, the first and most commonly used SNRI. It was introduced by Wyeth in 1994. The reuptake effects of venlafaxine are dose-dependent. At low doses, 150 mg per day, it acts on serotonergic and noradrenergic systems, whereas at high doses, greater than 300 mg per day, it also affects dopaminergic neurotransmission. History in 1952, ipronizid, an antimycobacterial agent, was discovered to have psychoactive properties while researched as a possible treatment for tuberculosis. Researchers noted that patients given ipronizid became cheerful, more optimistic, and more physically active. Soon after its development, ipronizid and related substances were shown to slow enzymatic breakdown of serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine via inhibition of the enzyme monoamine oxidase. For this reason, this class of drugs became known as monoamine oxidase inhibitors, or MAOIs. During this time development of distinctively different antidepressant agents was also researched. Amipramine became the first clinically useful tricyclic antidepressant, TCA. Amipramine was found to affect numerous neurotransmitter systems and to block reuptake of norepinephrine and serotonin from the synapse, therefore increasing the levels of these neurotransmitters. Use of MAOIs and TCAs gave major advances in treatment of depression but their use was limited by unpleasant side effects and significant safety and toxicity issues. Throughout the 1960s and 1970s, the catecholamine hypothesis of emotion and its relation to depression was of wide interest and that the decreased levels of certain neurotransmitters, such as norepinephrine, serotonin, and dopamine might play a role in the pathogenesis of depression. This led to the development of fluoxetine, the first SSRI. The improved safety and tolerability profile of the SSRIs in patients with MDD, compared with TCAs and MAOIs, represented yet another important advance in the treatment of depression. Since the late 1980s, SSRIs have dominated the antidepressant drug market. Today, there is increased interest in antidepressant drugs with broader mechanisms of action that may offer improvements in efficacy and fewer adverse effects. In 1993, a new drug was introduced to the U.S. market called venlafaxine, a serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. Venlafaxine was the first compound described in a new class of antidepressive substances called phenylethylamines. These substances are unrelated to TCA and other SSRIs. Venlafaxine blocks the neuronal reuptake of serotonin, noradrenaline, and, to a lesser extent, dopamine in the central nervous system. In contrast with several other antidepressant drugs, venlafaxine can induce a rapid onset of action mainly due to a subsequent norepinephrine reuptake inhibition. See timeline in Figure 1. Mechanism of action Monoamines are connected to the pathophysiology of depression. Symptoms may occur because concentrations of neurotransmitters, such as norepinephrine and serotonin, are insufficient, leading to downstream changes. Medications for depression affect the transmission of serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Older and more unselective antidepressants like TCAs and MAOIs inhibit the reuptake or metabolism of norepinephrine and serotonin in the brain, which results in higher concentrations of neurotransmitters. Antidepressants that have dual mechanisms of action inhibit the reuptake of both serotonin and norepinephrine and, in some cases, inhibit with weak effect the reuptake of dopamine. Antidepressants affect variable neuronal receptors like muscarinic cholinergic, alpha-1 and alpha-2 adrenergic, and H1 histaminergic receptors, and sodium channels in the cardiac muscle, leading to decreased cardiac conduction and cardiotoxicity. Selectivity of antidepressant agents are based on the neurotransmitters that are thought to influence symptoms of depression. Drugs that selectively block the reuptake of serotonin and norepinephrine effectively treat depression and are better tolerated than TCAs. TCAs have comprehensive effects on various neurotransmitters receptors, which leads to lack of tolerability and increased risk of toxicity. Tricyclic antidepressants TCAs were the first medications that had dual mechanism of action. The mechanism of action of tricyclic secondary amine antidepressants is only partly understood. TCAs have dual inhibition effects on norepinephrine reuptake transporters and serotonin reuptake transporters. 
Increased norepinephrine and serotonin concentrations are obtained by inhibiting both of these transporter proteins. TCAs have substantially more affinity for norepinephrine reuptake proteins than the SSRIs. This is because of a formation of secondary amine TCA metabolites. In addition, the TCAs interact with adrenergic receptors. This interaction seems to be critical for increased availability of norepinephrine in or near the synaptic clefts. Actions of amipramine like tricyclic antidepressants have complex, secondary adaptions to their initial and sustained actions as inhibitors of norepinephrine transport and variable blockade of serotonin transport. Norepinephrine interacts with postsynaptic alpha and beta adrenergic receptor subtypes and presynaptic alpha-2 autoreceptors. The alpha-2 receptors include presynaptic autoreceptors which limit the neurophysiological activity of noradrenergic neurons in the central nervous system. Formation of norepinephrine is reduced by autoreceptors through the rate-limiting enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase, an effect mediated by decreased cyclic AMP-mediated phosphorylation activation of the enzyme. Alpha-2 receptors also cause decreased intracellular cyclic AMP expression which results in smooth muscle relaxation or decreased secretion. TCAs activate a negative feedback mechanism through their effects on presynaptic receptors. One probable explanation for the effects on decreased neurotransmitter release is that, as the receptors activate, inhibition of neurotransmitter release occurs, including suppression of voltage-gated Ca2 plus currents and activation of G-protein-coupled receptor-operated K plus currents. Repeated exposure of agents with this type of mechanism leads to inhibition of neurotransmitter release, but repeated administration of TCAs finally leads to decreased responses by alpha-2 receptors. The desensitization of these responses may be due to increased exposure to endogenous norepinephrine or from the prolonged occupation of the norepinephrine transport mechanisms via an allosteric effect. The adaptation allows the presynaptic synthesis and secretion of norepinephrine to return to, or even exceed, normal levels of norepinephrine in the synaptic clefts. Overall, inhibition of norepinephrine reuptake induced by TCAs, leads to decreased rates of neuron firing, mediated through alpha-2 autoreceptors, metabolic activity, and release of neurotransmitters. TCAs do not block dopamine transport directly, but might facilitate dopaminergic effects indirectly by inhibiting dopamine transport into noradrenergic terminals of the cerebral cortex. Because they affect so many different receptors, TCAs have adverse effects, poor tolerability, and an increased risk of toxicity. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors SSRIs, selectively inhibit the reuptake of serotonin and are a widely used group of antidepressants. With increased receptors selectivity compared to TCAs, undesired effects like poor tolerability are avoided. Serotonin is synthesized from an amino acid called L-tryptophan. Active transport system regulates the uptake of tryptophan across the blood-brain barrier. Serotonergic pathways are classified into two main ways in the brain, the ascending projections from the medial and dorsal raphe and the descending projections from the caudal raphe into the spinal cord. Selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors Noradrenergic neurons are located in two major regions in the brain. These regions are locus ceruleus and lateral tegmental. With administration of selective NRIs, neuronal activity in locus ceruleus region is induced because of increased concentration of norepinephrine in the synaptic cleft. This results in activation of alpha-2 adrenergic receptors, as discussed previously. Assays have shown that selective NRIs have insignificant penchant for MOC, alpha-1 and alpha-2 adrenergic, or H1 receptors. Dual serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors Agents with dual serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibition SNRIs, are sometimes called non-tricyclic serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. Clinical studies suggest that compounds that increase the concentration in the synaptic cleft of both norepinephrine and serotonin are more successful than single-acting agents in the treatment of depression. Dual reuptake inhibitors have low affinity at neuronal receptors of the other neurotransmitters, which have low adverse effects compared with the TCAs. 
Non-tricyclic antidepressants have improved potency and onset action acceleration in antidepressant response than SSRIs alone, which give the impression that synergism is an efficient property in mediating antidepressant activity. The non-tricyclic SNRIs have several important differences that are based on pharmacokinetics, metabolism to active metabolites, inhibition of CYP isoforms, effect of drug-drug interactions, and the half-life of the non-tricyclic SNRIs. Combination of mechanisms of action in a single active agent is an important development in psychopharmacology. Structure activity relationship SAR. Aeroloxypropanamine scaffold Several reuptake inhibitors contain an aeroloxypropanamine scaffold. This structural motif has potential for high affinity binding to biogenic amine transports. Drugs containing an aeroloxypropanamine scaffold have selectivity profile for norepinephrine and serotonin transporters that depends on the substitution pattern of the aeroloxy ring. Selective NRIs contain a substituent in two. Position of the aeroloxy ring, but SSRIs contain a substituent in four feet. Position of the aeroloxy ring. Atomoxetine, nisoxetine, and reboxetine all have a substitution group in the two. Position and are selective NRIs, while compounds that have a substitution group in the four feet. Position, like fluoxetine and peroxetine, are SSRIs. Duloxetine contains a phenyl group fused at the two and three feet positions, therefore it has dual selective norepinephrine and serotonin reuptake inhibitory effects and has similar potencies for the both transporters. The nature of the aromatic substituent also has a significant influence on the activity and selectivity of the compounds as inhibitors of the serotonin or the norepinephrine transporters. Cycloalkanal ethylamine scaffold Venlafaxine and desvenlafaxine contain a cycloalkanal ethylamine scaffold. Increasing the electron withdrawing nature of the aromatic ring provides more potent inhibitory effect of norepinephrine uptake and improves the selectivity for norepinephrine over the serotonin transporter. Effects of chloro, methoxy and trifluoromethyl substituents in the aromatic ring of cycloalkanal ethylamine scaffold were tested. The results showed that the strongest electron withdrawing M trifluoromethyl analog exhibited the most potent inhibitory effect of norepinephrine and the most selectivity over serotonin uptake. Way 46824, a paparazine containing derivative, has shown norepinephrine and dopamine reuptake inhibition. Further synthesis and testing identified Way 256805, a potent norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor that exhibited excellent selectivity and was efficacious in animal models of depression, pain, and thermoregulatory dysfunction. Milnasopran Milnasopran is structurally different from other SNRIs. The SAR of milnasopran derivatives at transporter level is still largely unclear and is based on in vivo efficacy that was reported in 1987. N-methylation of milnasopran in substituent group R4 and R5 reduces the norepinephrine and serotonin activity. Researches on different secondary amides in substitution groups R6 and R7 showed that pi electrons play an important role in the interaction between transporters and ligands. A phenyl group in substituent R6 showed effect on norepinephrine transporters. Substituent groups in R6 and R7 with allylic double bond showed significant improved effect on both norepinephrine and serotonin transporters. Studies show that introducing a 2-methyl group in substituent R3, the potency at norepinephrine and serotonin transporters are almost abolished. Methyl groups in substituent groups R1 and R2 also abolish the potency at norepinephrine and serotonin transporters. Researchers found that replacing one of the ethyl groups of milnasopran with an allyl moiety increases the norepinephrine potency. The pharmacophore of milnasopran derivatives is still largely unclear. The conformation of milnasopran is an important part of its pharmacophore. Changing the SAR in milnasopran changes the stereochemistry of the compound and affects the norepinephrine and serotonin concentration. Milnasopran is marketed as a racemic mixture. Effects of milnasopran reside in the 1,2R isomer and substitution of the phenyl group in the 1,2R isomer has negative impact on norepinephrine concentration. Milnasopran has low molecular weight and low lipophilicity. 
Because of these properties, milnasopran exhibits almost ideal pharmacokinetics in humans such as high bioavailability, low intersubject variability, limited liver enzyme interaction, moderate tissue distribution and a reasonably long elimination half-life. Milnasopran's lack of drug-drug interactions via cytochrome P450 enzymes is thought to be an attractive feature because many of the central nervous system drugs are highly lipophilic and are mainly eliminated by liver enzymes. Future development of SAR The application of an aeroloxypropanamine scaffold has generated a number of potent MAOIs. Before the development of duloxetine, the exploration of aeroloxypropanamine SAR resulted in the identification of fluoxetine and atomoxetine. The same motif can be found in reboxetine where it is constrained in a morpholine ring system. Some studies have been made where the oxygen in reboxetine is replaced by sulfur to give morpholine. Some of the morpholine derivatives maintain potent levels of serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibition. Dual serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibition resides in different enantiomers for aerylthiomethylmorpholine scaffold. Possible drug candidates with dual serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitory activity have also been derived from paparazine, 3-aminopyrrolidin and benzylamine templates. Clinical trials Several studies have shown that antidepressant drugs which have combined serotonergic and noradrenergic activity are generally more effective than SSRIs, which act upon serotonin reuptake by itself. Serotonergic noradrenergic antidepressant drugs may have a modest efficacy advantage compared to SSRIs in treating major depressive disorder MDD, but are slightly less well tolerated. Further research is needed to examine the possible differences of efficacy in specific MDD subpopulations or for specific MDD symptoms between these classes of antidepressant drugs. Data from clinical trials have indicated that SNRIs might have pain relieving properties. Although the perception and transmission of pain stimuli in the central nervous system have not been fully elucidated, extensive data support a role for serotonin and norepinephrine in the modulation of pain. Findings from clinical trials in humans have shown these antidepressants can to reduce pain and functional impairment in central and neuropathic pain conditions. This property of SNRIs might be used to reduce doses of other pain-relieving medication and lower the frequency of safety, limited efficacy and tolerability issues. Clinical research data have shown in patients with GAD that the SNRI duloxetine is significantly more effective than placebo in reducing pain-related symptoms of GAD, after short-term and long-term treatment. However, findings suggested that such symptoms of physical pain reoccur in relapse situations, which indicates a need for ongoing treatment in patients with GAD and concurrent painful physical symptoms. Indications SNRIs have been approved for treatment of the following conditions Major Depressive Disorder MDD. Post Traumatic Stress Disorder PTSD. Generalized Anxiety Disorder GAD. Social Anxiety Disorder SAD. Panic Disorder Neuropathic Pain Fibromyalgia Chronic musculoskeletal pain. Pharmacology Route of administration SNRIs are delivered orally, usually in the form of capsules. The drugs themselves are usually a fine crystalline powder that diffuses into the body during digestion. Dosage Dosages fluctuate depending on the SNRI used due to varying potencies of the drug in question as well as multiple strengths for each drug. Mode of action The condition for which SNRIs are mostly indicated, major depressive disorder, is thought to be mainly caused by decreased levels of serotonin and norepinephrine in the synaptic cleft, causing erratic signaling. Due to the monoamine hypothesis of depression, which asserts that decreased concentrations of monoamine neurotransmitters leads to depression symptoms, the following relations were determined. 
Norepinephrine may be related to alertness and energy as well as anxiety, attention, and interest in life, lack of serotonin to anxiety, obsessions, and compulsions, and dopamine to attention, motivation, pleasure, and reward, as well as interest in life. SNRIs work by inhibiting the reuptake of the neurotransmitters serotonin and norepinephrine. This results in an increase in the extracellular concentrations of serotonin and norepinephrine and, therefore, an increase in neurotransmission. Most SNRIs including venlafaxine, desvenlafaxine, and duloxetine, are several-fold more selective for serotonin over norepinephrine, while milnasopran is three times more selective for norepinephrine than serotonin. Elevation of norepinephrine levels is thought to be necessary for an antidepressant to be effective against neuropathic pain, a property shared with the older tricyclic antidepressants (TCAs), but not with the SSRIs. Recent studies have shown that depression may be linked to increased inflammatory response. Thus, attempts at finding an additional mechanism for SNRIs have been made. Studies have shown that SNRIs as well as SSRIs have significant anti-inflammatory action on microglia in addition to their effect on serotonin and norepinephrine levels. As such, it is possible that an additional mechanism of these drugs that acts in combination with the previously understood mechanism exist. The implication behind these findings suggests use of SNRIs as potential anti-inflammatories following brain injury or any other disease where swelling of the brain is an issue. However, regardless of the mechanism, the efficacy of these drugs in treating the diseases for which they have been indicated has been proven, both clinically and in practice. Pharmacodynamics Most SNRIs function alongside primary metabolites and secondary metabolites in order to inhibit reuptake of serotonin, norepinephrine, and marginal amounts of dopamine. For example, venlafaxine works alongside its primary metabolite odesmethylvenlafaxine to strongly inhibit serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake in the brain. The evidence also suggests that dopamine and norepinephrine behave in a cotransportational manner, due to the inactivation of dopamine by norepinephrine reuptake in the frontal cortex, an area of the brain largely lacking in dopamine transporters. This effect of SNRIs results in increased dopamine neurotransmission, in addition to the increases in serotonin and norepinephrine activity. Furthermore, because SNRIs are extremely selective, they have no measurable effects on other, unintended receptors, in contrast to monoamine oxidase inhibition. Pharmaceutical tests have determined that use of both SNRIs or SSRIs can generate significant anti-inflammatory action on microglia, as well. Activity profiles Pharmacokinetics The usual half-life of SNRIs is 5 hours, with patients reaching peak effectiveness approximately 4 hours post-ingestion. Contraindications Due to the effects of increased norepinephrine levels and, therefore, higher noradrenergic activity, pre-existing hypertension should be controlled before treatment with SNRIs and blood pressure periodically monitored throughout treatment. Duloxetine has also been associated with cases of hepatic failure and should not be prescribed to patients with chronic alcohol use or liver disease. Patients suffering from coronary artery disease should avoid the use of SNRIs. Furthermore, due to some SNRIs. Actions on obesity. Patients with major eating disorders such as anorexia nervosa or bulimia should not be prescribed SNRIs. Duloxetine and milnasopran are also contraindicated in patients with uncontrolled narrow angle glaucoma, as they have been shown to increase incidence of mydriasis. SNRIs should be taken with caution when using St. John. S. Wart, as the combination can lead to the potentially fatal serotonin syndrome. There is also a significant risk when combining SNRIs with dextromethorphan, tramadol, cyclobenzaprine, meperidine, pethidine, and propoxyphene. They should never be taken within 24 hours of any other antidepressant, especially with monoamine oxidase inhibitors MAOIs, as combinations of SNRIs with MAOIs can cause hyperthermia, rigidity, myoclonus, autonomic instability with fluctuating vital signs, and mental status changes that include extreme agitation progressing to delirium and coma. Side effects 
Because the SNRIs and SSRIs act in similar ways to elevate serotonin levels, they share many side effects, though to varying degrees. The most common side effects include loss of appetite, weight, and sleep, drowsiness, dizziness, fatigue, headache, increase in suicidal thoughts, nausea, vomiting, sexual dysfunction, and urinary retention. There are two common sexual side effects, diminished interest in sex, libido, and difficulty reaching climax, anorgasmia, which are usually somewhat milder with SNRIs compared to SSRIs. Elevation of norepinephrine levels can sometimes cause anxiety, mildly elevated pulse, and elevated blood pressure. However, norepinephrine-selective antidepressants, such as reboxetine and dizipramine, have successfully treated anxiety disorders. People at risk for hypertension and heart disease should monitor their blood pressure. Precautions Starting an SNRI regimen Due to the extreme changes in noradrenergic activity produced from norepinephrine and serotonin reuptake inhibition, patients that are just starting an SNRI regimen are usually given lower doses than their expected final dosing to allow the body to acclimate to the drug's effects. As the patient continues along at low doses without any side effects, the dose is incrementally increased until the patient sees improvement in symptoms without detrimental side effects. Discontinuation syndrome. As with SSRIs, the abrupt discontinuation of an SNRI usually leads to withdrawal, or discontinuation syndrome, which could include states of anxiety and other symptoms. Therefore, it is recommended that users seeking to discontinue an SNRI slowly taper the dose under the supervision of a professional. Discontinuation syndrome has been reported to be markedly worse for venlafaxine when compared to other SNRIs. As such, as tramadol is related to venlafaxine, the same conditions apply. This is likely due to venlafaxine's relatively short half-life and therefore rapid clearance upon discontinuation. Overdose Causes Overdosing on SNRIs can be caused by either drug combinations or excessive amounts of the drug itself. Venlafaxine is marginally more toxic in overdose than duloxetine or the SSRIs. Symptoms Symptoms of SNRI overdose, whether it be a mixed drug interaction or the drug alone, vary in intensity and incidence based on the amount of medicine taken and the individual's sensitivity to SNRI treatment. Possible symptoms may include Somnolence Coma Serotonin syndrome Seizures Syncope Tachycardia Hypotension Hypertension Hyperthermia Vomiting Management Overdose is usually treated symptomatically, especially in the case of serotonin syndrome, which requires treatment with cyproheptadine and temperature control based on the progression of the serotonin toxicity. Patients are often monitored for vitals and airways cleared to ensure that they are receiving adequate levels of oxygen. Another option is to use activated carbon in the GI tract in order to absorb excess neurotransmitter. It is important to consider drug interactions when dealing with overdose patients, as separate symptoms can arise. Comparison to SSRIs Because SNRIs were developed more recently than SSRIs, there are relatively few of them. However, the SNRIs are among the most widely used antidepressants today. In 2009, Cymbalta and Effexor were the 11th and 12th most prescribed branded drugs in the United States. This translates to the second and third most common antidepressants, behind Lexapro, number 5, the SSRI escitalopram. In some studies, SNRIs demonstrated slightly higher antidepressant efficacy than the SSRIs, response rates 63.6% versus 59.3%. However, in one study escitalopram had a superior efficacy profile to venlafaxine. See also 
Monoamine reuptake inhibitor References